So that was Joe Castillo, sand artist extraordinaire. See, we were serious about it being a sandbox game. <laughs> so I'm Dave Georgeson. I'm the uh, director of development for the EverQuest uh, franchise. And it is August 2nd, and it's afternoon. So it's finally time to talk about EverQuest next. <laughs> As most of you know, it was about two years ago that uh, SOE decided to reboot its EverQuest next project in favor of striking out in entirely new directions. What we didn't tell you at the time was why. It was because enough is enough. <laughs> enough of the same game already. It's time to get some new ideas into this genre. And if somebody was going to do it, it should be EverQuest. <laughs> Again. <laughs> So we, uh, we spent the, six uh, the first six months brainstorming out what we might be able to do, um, how far we could go, and what sort of limits we might have. And as we talked, the ideas started to piece together into a whole that was, well, it was really intriguing to us. So we spent the next year prototyping, trying to figure out which of our crazy ideas might actually work. And the, uh, well, the cool thing was most of them did. <laughs> so. Um, we're at the point right now where we're building something that's both heroic and social. We've taken everything we know about games and MMOs in general, and we're fusing the best parts into an original shape well, that we hope will uh, create triumph and, uh, and passion in the gamers that play it. And that's you guys. So let's talk about that game. And the way that I want to start talking about that game is by talking about the world of Norath. When we decided to build this game and, and, and to take it all the way down to its core and start all over again, we decided to go ahead and do that with everything, including the lore. So we've taken a tip from uh, you know, like, uh, what they've done recently with the Star Trek uh, uh, franchise, J.J. Abrams kind of retooled some stuff, and what we decided to do was to maintain the, uh, the names and the places and stuff that you've come to love over time, but tell new stories, interconnect them in different ways, so that as, you, as you explore through EverQuest next, as you explore through this new Norath, you're constantly finding stuff that will surprise and amaze you. Now, that's the lore, and I'm going to leave most of that to, uh, uh, to the panels, but I wanted to take just a moment to let you know that we're going to be releasing new fiction um, on a regular basis as we uh, go through the uh, development process. And in fact, um, uh, later today, the first of these stories will appear on the website, everquestnext.com, and you can download The Last Stand of the Tear It All which will have a lot to do with the sand painting you just saw. And I want to introduce, if, the, uh, if some of the authors that are here could stand up right now, please. Uh, these are some of the authors that are writing our stories. In fact, they'll be outside, and you can talk to them after the show here. Uh, Maxwell Drake wrote the uh, first story. Thank you, guys. Anyway, so you also want to see what the game's going to look like. Well, to tell you how the, how the game is going to look, I want to start with concept art. And in fact, the, the first concept pieces that I'm going to show you, uh, some of them are areas that you know, and some of them will be new. Um, the first area that I'm going to show you, the first two areas, are going to be subterranean concepts. This first one is a painting of what it might look like underneath Everfrost. Now, as you can see, we were, uh, we were doing treatments of color and lighting and things like that. And when we uh, pushed the, uh, this concept over to Lava Storm, it looked like this. Now, of course, we didn't just do subterranean stuff. We went for overground stuff, too, of course. And uh, this is how Lava Storm will look overground. And uh, we figured that as long as you were going to call it Lava Storm, well, it ought to you know, have a Lava Storm once in a while. So that's what we're doing. And we're going for a much more dynamic, uh, exciting look, and more adventurous as you go through it. We also want to concentrate in on finding uh, really epic grandeur moments as you move through the world. You'll keep, uh, you'll keep finding things that are just majestic and mighty. We're doing remakes of areas that you haven't seen since the original EverQuest. This is the way Oasis will look. And this is a good shot of Firot. Now, you're going to be seeing a lot more of Firot today as we go through it. But I also wanted to let you know that we're bringing new areas to the game as well. This is a concept painting of Ashfang. And just to prove that we uh, actually have been doing something for the last couple of years, I'll show you a couple of screenshots here before we get to the actual game. 
This is the way Ash Vang looks in the game right now. So this kind of detail, the vegetation, the lighting, and everything like that is exactly the way that we want things to be moving. And this is the way a subterranean lava chamber might look. In fact, does look in the game. Now here's a sweet one. This is the way Firat looks. And we really like the lighting. But I don't want to just show you still screenshots. We also, you, of course, you all want to see what the game looks like inside the game. So this is the game. Um, we're going to show, run you through some flyovers and stuff before we start to show you action. Um, the first, uh, the first fly through is of Ashfang. So this is the way the game looks as you move through it right now. As you can see, we're doing a lot of detail, the rock strata, um, the lighting, everything like that. One of the wonderful things about working at SOE is that we get to utilize the technology that other people have created before us. And so we're using the Forge Light engine that was created for Planetside 2 in this game. Of course, it's been heavily modified, but uh, you can see that the, uh, the lighting and the details and stuff as you go through the game are incredible adventure experiences. Yeah, we like the way that's coming out quite well. And then this, this is Firat. The lighting through the trees, the feeling of a heavy humidity, all of these things contribute to an adventuring experience where you never know exactly what's gonna be over the next rise or what's through the next archway. And uh, we're gonna be visiting this a lot as we, uh, as we go through today's presentation. But uh, yeah, we definitely like where this is going. How do you like it? Great. Well, then I'll show you a little bit more of our tech. We, of course, have a really cool time of day system, and, uh, and that has some uh, really, really huge benefits as, we, uh, as we're adventuring through the world. Here's a shot of that. So this is all time uh, sped up so that we can uh, show you the whole day as it progresses. But you can see that as the sun moves through the sky, the lighting changes all the way around the world. And as the sun sets, we see a true night, which is a really exciting thing to adventure through. Okay, so that's the way our world looks. Now there's a lot more to it than just pretty pictures. So what we wanna do is then now take you to the way that we developed our characters and the different races of Norath. So we started out, we, were, uh, we started out looking for something of a more heroic fantasy look this time around. We wanted to make sure that we had a kind of a rough and tumble look. We wanted to have a real dynamic kind of movement system. And we wanted people to feel natural when they were being uh, acrobatic and showing wear on armor and things like that. So the look we started to nail down was this kind of thing. So as uh, the, we started out, oops, <laughs> screwed up my own stuff. So anyway, we, uh, we started out looking at the, uh, the humans and uh, looking at the way that they were uh, shaped and the way, uh, the way that their armor stuff was so that we had more of that rough and tumble look. And then we decided to take that and to extrapolate it through all the different other races of Norath. The first one that we looked at was the dwarves. And since I've already kind of screwed that up, we'll go ahead and show that to you. So the, uh, the dwarves are uh, uh, very robust, very uh, uh, stern, uh, occasionally surly, but lots of character. And then when we got around to doing the elves, we wanted to make sure that they were kind of the almost diametric opposite. So that they were an extremely beautiful race. And this is the way the elves look in a game now. We wanted to make sure that dark elves had their own look, very distinctive, and so we gave them some really deep lore also, which we'll talk about more in the panels. And this is the way dark elves look in the game. And then we gave a huge facelift to a couple of, uh, couple of other races that you're familiar with. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the ogres were a lot more intelligent this time around, more organized, much more militaristic. And so that's the ogres. And then I'm only gonna show one more race for right now, but uh, I wanted to show you the way the Karens have been remade. Some of you have seen, of course, the Gabor painting, but this is the way that the, uh, the more lionish Karens look inside the game now. And you'll see that in action in a few minutes. 
So then we wrapped around back to the humans again, and we finalized the look, of, uh, look and feel of the way that their, uh, their features were. Because one of the things that we wanted to do was make sure that this was a really robust role-playing game. That the people that like to do machinima or, or messing around with their friends and having fun and telling jokes and stuff like that could show that expressiveness on their face. So we, um, we took care to exaggerate a couple of the features that would allow you to see that kind of uh, expressiveness even at a distance. The eyes, the mouth, they're exaggerated just slightly. And when, we, uh, when you trigger manual emotes, or use as we emote, you get this kind of expressiveness range inside the game. Now, not everybody is familiar with SO Emote because it's only in EQ2 right now. But SO Emote, just to, just to recap for everybody, is this really cool tech we have where you can have, a, have your webcam on your monitor, and as it faces your face and you move your face in real time, so does the character's face move into, inside the game. And that kind of effect, whether you're triggering manual emotes or using SO Emote, it looks like this. And I think you'll see that expressiveness like this just does not exist in any other game. There you go. <laughs> Okay, so that's the way our, our, our faces looked and that's the way that our characters looked, but we needed to make sure that you had lots of good gear, lots of great ways to express the way that you want to look. So in EverQuest Next, the way that you look is entirely under your control. If you decide that what you want is a chainmail uh, a bikini, then that's what you can wear. If you want full plate or you want really cool clothes, that's what you can wear also. So th we developed a system by which we could create all kinds of stuff at a really rapid rate and at a very high detail level. We think that uh, we like where that's going. And when you take Take that kind of detail level and you combine it with cloth and hair movements, you get this kind of effect and the characters start to really come to life. So let's see those characters in game. Now what I'm about to show you is the first time anybody has seen these characters in game. So uh, we'll start with the human uh, female. Uh, and she's a wizard, so uh, we gave her a name because we don't like calling her the human female all the time. <laughs> so this is Jelena in Ashvay. And then we played a few emotes so that you could see what she looked like when she was actually doing those facial expressions. We really like the way that's looking. We also wanted to show you the Karen male. And uh, this is, of course, we gave him a name. This is Keyshar. And the Karens have some pretty cool emotes. This is my favorite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's the way our characters look in game. Now we wanted to make sure that you're, uh, when you're moving around from point, B, uh, point A to point B in the world, that it was a really fun experience. I mean, we do a lot of walking in these games because we're exploring all the time. So we wanted to make sure that that was a really, really exciting experience for you. So what we're doing is we're adding a parkour-like, what we call heroic movement system into the game. And that means that as you're moving through the world and you encounter a low obstacle, you can just sort of vault over the top of it without any effort, or slide down a hill, or be able to uh, jump up and grab a ledge and pull yourself up, or rough and tumble off the top, maybe even a double jump in the air. And I don't want to just tell you about that, I want to actually show you, so let's, go, uh, let's revisit Jelena and Kishar as they go through the canyons of Ashvang. So there is that slide. She does a little double jump in the air. Here's that vault. You don't have to push any extra buttons for that. It just happens when you encounter them, so does the slide. Now, a lot of the different classes have special abilities that can be triggered. The wizard has a, has a teleport ability. And the warrior can leap. All the different classes have different abilities. You can also gain items that allow you to have cool movement systems. This is the boots of the Zephyr, which allow them to glide through the air. A little flash. Watch the Karen now. 
That's his sprint. 